Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an episode of a tag along. With us we have Muhammad Manaf in sunny Southern California here in Orange County, as you guys can see. Uh, so this tag along, we're just going to get to know Muhammad Manaf. He's going to give us a tour of the neighborhood. So why don't we get started? Here we go. It's a far cry from uh, H-Town, huh? Uh, yeah, man. At this time of the day, you'd you, be sweating buckets. Oh my, it's hard to come out until after the sun comes down. With heat, some people like the dry heat because obviously the humidity is, you sweat more and it's harder to breathe. And then some people are like, no, I like the humidity because with the dry heat, your skin dries up. And what, 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 what do you prefer? You know, if you're in double digits, you're right. Yeah. Here in California, how often do you get to 100? Uh, we have a few days, but few not days. not many, not many. Yeah, we had we had a couple of days where it was over 100 this past summer. You want to show us around the mezzanine and stuff? Uh, sure, we'd have to walk there and cross the street. Okay, that's fine. Is that uh, is that safe for you? <laughs> you guys don't walk very much on the streets in Houston. Well, that's th th those are Houston natives, bro. Okay. You're not talking to a Houston. Oh, that's native. a good point. New Jersey, New York. So, would you be a New Jersey native or New York native? Uh, I'm an Indian native. Interesting. <laughs> Usually when those two words come together, it refers to actual natives. <laughs> native Indian. I'm a native Indian. That's very interesting. Yeah, so alhamdulillah, it's a, it's a, it's a big blessing, you know. We are, we are blessed with great, great weather and great scenery in this part of the country, alhamdulillah. So, tell us about yourself, man. Yeah. I mean, I know about you, but the, the folks here on the, uh, on the internet, not so much, maybe. All those people. Yes, all them, all them folks. So right now we're in Orange County, and uh, I didn't always used to live in Orange County. I was born in Hollywood. For real? Yeah. Cool. I never lived there, but I was I was born there. I was where the hospital was, and uh, so grew up in Los Angeles for the first few years, several years, and then uh, my family moved to the city of Long Beach. Okay. Known as the LBC. Why? Or the five six two. Why? What's the LBC? Uh, it's quite a notorious city. It's it's most commonly known in the in the hip hop circles as it was made notorious through some of the lyrics of uh, a certain Snoop Dogg. Most of my life there, went to school there, uh, up until uh, up until we went to Medina. That's where I was. I was in Long Beach, and then from Long Beach to Medina, and then after Medina, uh, which was a big blessing, back to Southern California, and this time Orange County. So here we are in the city of Anaheim, Orange County. Yeah, dude's born in Orange County, not Orange, LA, in yeah. Hollywood. Yeah. And you ask him about movies, he doesn't know. However, to his credit, he knows quite a bit about stories. Stories are amazing. I mean, that's the basis of movies, right? It's all based on a story. So, I mean, you have to have good actors, you have to have yeah. good characters, of course. Um, but it starts with a storyline. Mm -hmm. um, you know, before you, I, I, I don't know the details of the process of making a movie, but before you have to find actors to fulfill these characters, you have to start with a story. Um, so speaking of stories, a story comes to mind uh, about the power of a story. See how many times we can use the word in. <laughs> we're, we're going extremely meta right now. <laughs> and regarding stories, there's a story about the power of story. I know, right? I heard this from one of my teachers, um, who was an imam here. So there was a uh, time and place where there were these two women and they were competing between them who is more beautiful. You know, they were going back and forth and each one is saying I'm more beautiful than you. So they devised a, you know, a competition of sorts. Sure. Uh, a way to figure out once and for all and set the record straight who's more beautiful. So they said, okay, you know, our city, our village is at the bottom of this hill. So they said we're going to go to the top of this hill and we're going to walk, we're going to take turns. Each one of us is going to walk down this hill and walk through the village and we're going to see who gets more attention. Who gets more ahs and oohs and applause. And that will mean that this person is more beautiful. And so they go one at a time and the first one goes, she goes down the hill, she goes through the village and um, nobody looks. No attention. Nothing. So she starts calling out, trying to get everyone's attention. No one's responding. So she starts taking off some of her clothes, mm -hmm. get more attention, and it's still not working, not getting any attention. So she goes back to the top of this hill, and she feels terrible, because she feels like she lost. Her name was Truth. But Truth says, you know, it's your turn now. And so the next one goes, she goes down the hill, and as soon as she steps foot in the village, everybody comes out, 
and cheers and from the rooftops and on the streets and they're giving her full attention and they're so happy to see her and she walks through the village and walks back up to the hill and Truth is crying because now she knows for sure that she really did lose mm -hmm. Truth says, you know, I've lost and she tells this to the other woman whose name was Story and so Story says, no, you didn't lose it's just they were not able to see your beauty but when we come together, Truth and Story we'll be able to show the people your true inner beauty so the idea behind this, you know, story is that people are attracted naturally to stories. And this is not anything new. It's, it's the timeless, age-old, every generation loves stories. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they employ this method of communication, of, of education, of getting the message across with stories. In our tradition, so we have blameworthy mention of these people known as Qassasin, the storytellers. Yeah. Why is that the case? Well, that's the case because when stories are, are baseless or they're based on something which is incorrect or a lie uh, or the information leads to something which is a corrupt or an incorrect belief, mm -hmm. then this is something blameworthy. But when the story is based on truth and it's presented in an appropriate way uh, and the lessons and the morals are profound and, and relevant and useful then that becomes something very beautiful cool. and so we have a lot of stories in the Quran a lot of stories and uh, I love stories I love listening to them I love telling them um, it's it's great so Allah tells us in the Quran why he has these why he mentions these stories he tells us that uh, we will relate to you O Muhammad وسلم, the best of stories Ahsan al -qasas. and that's in Surah Yusuf which is one of people's most beloved stories in the Quran of one of the most beloved prophets. And then if you fast forward to the end of that same surah, yeah. Allah tells us why, what's the point behind these stories. عِبْرَةً لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَاب As a عِبْرَةً, as a profound lesson. Um, so while they are entertaining, it's wonderful. I mean, as a child, uh, I would go to bed every night with stories, stories of the prophets and stories of Sahaba. You know, I have my family to thank for that. Um, but there are profound lessons in these stories. Uh, so not only are they entertaining and they're enjoyable, uh, you know, intellectually and emotionally, uh, they also have very profound lessons that are relevant to our everyday lives. Dang, this thing is heavy, bro. <laughs> there we go. You know what, let's grab a chair. Let's grab a chair? Yeah, or, or, or a bench or something. Sure. Oh, um, okay, you can hold on to a chair. I'll give you a break. Thank you. <laughs> you deserve it. You're a very unique individual within the Al Maghrib roster. You're the only one within the entire roster that's graduated from the, uh, the, the School of Quran. Yeah, the College of Quran in Medina. Yeah, that was a, that was a big blessing, alhamdulillah. Um, when I first went to Medina, I enrolled in the College of Sharia. Okay. Which is the most popular college in the, is in that the like a highest default? populated. Um, you could say default. It's, it, it has the highest student population. Most okay. students will go there. Um, and so I, I began my first semester there. And um, uh, it, it wasn't, you know, the most productive of experiences for me personally. Okay. So I had to really think carefully and consult with my teachers and uh, uh, get their advice based on what I wanted to achieve from the university studies and what I wanted to achieve in general in my time okay. studying in Medina. And once we assessed those needs and those goals, uh, then it became, you know, clear that I would be able to benefit the most from the College of Quran. Uh, and that was a big blessing, alhamdulillah, uh, because the College of Quran is the smallest college in the university um, in terms of number, number of students and faculty. I would assume that the reason for the small number of uh, students and faculty is because is there a higher uh, barrier to entry? or the It's the only college that has a prerequisite. Okay, and what's that prerequisite? So the student must have memorized the Quran in entirety. Okay, and do they test you? Yep. Okay. So there's kind of like an, an interview, you can okay. say. Uh, when you submit the paperwork, uh, you will sit down with one of the teachers and they will basically ask you different questions. They will ask you to recite from different places in the Quran. Did you get in on the first try? Um, so the first day that I went, yeah. um, the first day that I went, I, I didn't know that there would be this test or this interview at that time. So I yeah. went to submit my documents uh -huh. and the person that I gave my papers to, he was like, okay, you know, you have to take this paper to the office down the hallway and get it signed. Got it. Uh, and so as I was about to leave, he's like, he's like, make sure you're ready. And I was like, <laughs> okay. 
okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so I go down to the office, and uh, and uh, so I give him the paper, and he looks at the paper, you know, and he's about to sign off on it, and he was like, uh, okay, uh, you can go with this uh, gentleman over here. He was a graduate student that was also a teacher. Okay. He was also um, a professor like in the college. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so he's like, hey, there's an empty classroom, you know, right beside us. You can go in there, and he'll uh, he'll interview you. And so I go in the classroom, and then he's like, okay, recite from here, recite from there. And I'm like, oh, you know, some of them I'm getting, some of them I'm fumbling on. Okay. Uh, and so then, you know, he's like, okay, you know, this is you're good, you're good. But he's like, you know what? I want you to come back tomorrow. <laughs> uh, and so I was okay. like, okay, alhamdulillah, sure. Uh, so I came. Actually, it wasn't tomorrow. It was a couple days later. It was okay. like uh, two days later. Uh, and so I was like, okay, sure. So I, I met that same teacher again two days later yeah. uh, in the same room, in the same hallway. Did he tell you again, what to he prepare? Asked me, no. No, no. he Did asked me different questions. Okay. They're totally different questions. Gotcha. Uh, and then he was like, uh, you know, he gave me some good advice and, and some tips about, you know, how to, uh, how to uh, benefit from my time in that college. Uh, and then they signed off on the paper and that was it. Alhamdulillah. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, when you say the difference in size, yeah. what are we talking in numbers? Oh, thousands. We're talking thousands of students. So the the school of Sharia yes. is thousands of students. Thousands of students. And the school of Quran is uh, hundreds, four or five hundred, if that. Oh wow! It's the size and that's of, uh, that's inclusive of uh, all levels. High school. That's that's undergraduate, graduate. Oh, everything. Yeah, everything. Yeah. Oh wow! Very small. Dang! How often do the people that enroll in it? Uh, is it like intensive in comparison to the others or what makes it more intensive is you're required to do a lot of memorization but what if you already have it memorized not quran oh uh there are texts oh okay. poems uh so something very interesting a lot of the classical islamic sciences they were codified in poetry poetry okay um which was which was the, the point behind that was to make it easier to memorize gotcha um because a big part of a big part of knowledge is is retaining that information memorizing sure. it um and so you're expected to memorize these texts okay word for word uh which is time consuming i can imagine yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. okay. W was there a process you figured along the way, or is it just... You know, there is no magic pill for memorization. Whether it's Qur'an, whether it's Hadith, or whether it's poetry, or whether it's a book. Like, did you start there like, is writing it on the wall and I, memorizing it? I didn't write it on the wall. No. I had a notebook that, okay. that I would write in. Um, <laughs> that would be cool, though. <laughs> it, it all comes down to start, repetition. Start tagging the walls of the uh, school. No, I didn't do that. <laughs> hey, you guys, get your graffiti cans. <laughs> We're going to start memorizing some poetry. <laughs> no, I, I never wrote on the walls. Um, but some people would, would, you know, sometimes you'd walk through the dorms and somebody would write, like, the dhikr or something on the wall. I, I didn't like that. But, um, but no, we wrote, in, we wrote in our notebooks, alhamdulillah. Now, one of the things that you're teaching with us, uh, with Al-Maghrib, the life of Musa. The life of Musa, yes. Sir. What inspired the story of Musa? I wanted to do a class that is Quran heavy. Okay. That has a lot of... Quranic basis to it. We have uh, a lot of tafsir courses, traditional tafsir, where we're going through a particular passage or a particular chapter of the Quran yeah. from beginning till end, uh, which is great. Uh, but we wanted to do something a little bit different. Um, and the story of Musa is is the story of Musa and, and Bani Israel is is one of the most repeated stories in the Quran. Okay. Uh, and there's got to be a reason for that. Sure. There's got to be uh, many reasons and wisdoms for that. Uh, and so we want to explore how this story is told in the Qur'an uh, and go through it stage by stage, extracting lessons, relevant lessons, bringing the story to life. The most effective way of getting instructors to get stuff done yeah. is telling them they're going to teach on this date. Right. <laughs> Next thing you know, they're going into overdrive. <laughs> well, you got to juggle a lot of different things, so. Nah, but we'll make it happen, inshallah. Cool. With the, with right. the help from Allah, it will be it will be a great great seminar, inshallah. Inshallah, uh, guys, this is Muhammad Mana in sunny Southern California for an episode of Tag Along. Our, one of our latest instructors who has joined the roster. Some of you guys uh, who might have um, been following Al Maghrib and the content that's been put out over the last decade might remember him for one of the Um Summit videos. That uh, you probably don't. Summit video. <laughs> He's like, what him summit video? Uh, or if you attended him summit in the past, you might have, you, you might remember him. So that's when I, I think, was that the first time we met in 09 or were you there in 08 too? Uh, 08, yeah. very first one. Gotcha. The so very first time summit. That was the very first. That's when Muhammad and I met. 
and uh, and then he kind of scurried off to Medina, and uh, and they came back with a beard. <laughs> <laughs> Miracle girl. Yeah. So we are here at Masjid Umar Al Farooq. Um, IIOC, the Islamic Institute of Orange County. Yeah, I was gonna say, Masjid Omar Farooq does not hyphenate into IIOC. Hey man, um, you can have multiple names. You know, the chapters of Quran have multiple names, you know? <laughs> IIOC is not a name, it's a, it's, it's a bunch of numbers. It is a name, IIOC. Bunch of numbers? <laughs> Letters! <laughs> I've been up for almost what two did days you say now. Earlier today? Uh, I said, you said California get a, get a, get is a. Fresh a of breath air. Yeah, California is a fresh of breath air. Uh, so this is our, this is the main uh, prayer hall. This is the musalla. Um, you guys might uh, be familiar with some of the videos from the IOC TV YouTube account, uh, the Jumu'ah khutbahs and the classes. So a lot of that action comes from here. Um, there is the, uh, the minbar and the mihrab. And uh, up there, you got the, uh, the women's section over there. And um, so we came in from the back. So the front entrance is to the uh, side of the musalla. And uh, back over here. Where's your HQ? HQ? I can't show you that. <laughs> if I show you that, we're going to have to, we can't let you go. Um, this is the back over here. We got some, we got some basketball courts. Um, you know. Do you ball? Well, um, sort of. I do. But the question is, um, the question is, can you hang or not? Ah, uh, okay. Palm trees. People always talk about Southern California for the palm trees. Aren't they absolutely beautiful? They are. You know, I came down to Houston. Uh, and I'm like, oh, Houston, palm trees, date palms and stuff. No, no. It, it, it's just like, oh, look, they have dates. Look. There's something growing there, yeah. Yeah, I think those are dates. Does anybody ever pick them? No. Um, you know, the process of, of getting dates is actually pretty intricate. What do you mean? Uh, it's not as simple as a date is growing on the tree, pick it. No? It's not that simple. No, the, the date palm it? trees, they have to be, they have to be pollinated. Um, oh. A farmer has to actually physically pollen. Palm, palm trees have male trees and they have female trees. Okay. Um, yeah. Very Can intense. You know which one's which? I can't. I'm not well versed in that uh, in that science. In palm tree biology? No, but it is intense. It is intense. That's very cool. Is there any other tree system that has? No, that's the only one to my knowledge. And uh, there, there are a lot of other things that are very unique about the palm tree. That's why Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When he was with the companions, he asked them which uh, tree is most similar to the human being. It's the palm tree. Um, if you cut off the top of the palm tree, it won't grow back again. It's like the head of the tree. Okay. It's not like any other tree where if you cut off, you know, a big branch, it can grow back. Uh, if you cut off the top of the palm tree, it won't grow back again. California is very famous for date palms and dates. There are huge um, right, date California farms. Majdul dates. Yeah. All those dates that you guys get on uh, Ramadan, those big boxes. Yeah. They come from here. So have you heard of a place called Palm Springs? Yes. Yeah. So Palm Springs. There's a place called Indio. Okay. Has a lot of date farms. A lot of dates. Mahmoud, thank you for joining. Zakallah khair. Pleasure and is mine. I look forward to seeing you, seeing more of you. See you at the seminar coming to uh, your city, inshallah ta'ala. It's coming to a city near you. Hey man, it all works, bro. <laughs> the point is, it's coming to you. Just be there. <laughs> yes, be there or be square. Because if you're around, because if you're not square, you're not around. No, something like Let's that. Let's not make this a geometry lesson, <laughs> all right, bro? <laughs> all right, guys. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum.